Welcome to the unit's Petroleum Process Control and Instrumentation, which is offered in the School of Engineering, Energy uh, and Built Environment, Department of Energy. We are going to discuss about Lesson 2, which is the elements of a measurement system. Uh, the objective of this particular uh, lesson or the topic one is to define the components of a measurement system, understand the basic component of a measurement system, understand the auxiliary components of a measurement system, then identify the available components in a given measurement system. We are going to start with the definition so that we can be familiar with the terms, elements, measurement, and the system. Uh, to begin with, measurement is the act of comparing a given quantity whose magnitude is unknown and a predefined uh, standard. So when you are doing any sort of measurement, you are using a standard which is already known. Uh, maybe you are, using, uh, you are trying to measure the length. So you are using a standard ruler. So you are measuring whatever you don't know against what you know or a predefined standard. That is basically the meaning of measurement. And it is a process by which one can convert physical parameters to meaningful numbers. Um, they are meaningful if they possess two basic requirements. One, the standard used, if any, must be accurately defined and should be commonly accepted. Now, you are, when you are using a particular instrument for doing the measurement, what I mean here is, is that it must be a standard which is recognized, it is up to date, it is accurate, and it can be traced. Then the second uh, point is that the apparatus and the method ad adopted must be provable. Uh, by this I mean when you are trying to measure, uh, do your measurement, you must follow a procedure whereby somebody else can also follow the same same procedure and obtain the same same measurements that you are doing or the, obtain the same same measurements that you've gotten. It also, measurements also involves the use of instruments as a physical means of determining unknown quantities. So these, these quantities are the ones that are described in the, in the lesson one. So when you're trying to come up with the quantities, you must involve the instrument. I've just given a simple example of when you're using a ruler to measure maybe in terms of centimeters or meters. So those instruments must be determined by uh, known quantities. Then a measuring instrument exists to provide information about the physical value of the variable being measured. Uh, when we come to the definitions of uh, elements and system so that you can come up with a solid definition of uh, of the lesson two that is elements of a measurement system elements uh, if you don't check on the if you check on the dictionary you'll get most is defined as the the chemicals that are used and all that but here we are not using the chemicals so these are components that are necessary in a particular system to be complete so when you want, um, when you are working with a system, then there must be elements that are coming up with that system to make it complete. So it is complete, function well, and give the desired results. Then when you come to the system, we are, is also a combination of components that act together and perform a certain objective. So when we have those three um, definitions of elements, measurement, and system, then we come with a solid definition as elements of a measurement system is the combination of components that are necessary in a measurement system to perform a certain objective. So our main objective here is to know the, the unknown quantity and this unknown quantity is approved. It can be proved and uh, the procedures that are uh, followed are recommended or they are also approved. And uh, when we come to the elements of a measurement system, there are basically two types. One is the basic functional elements, 
and the auxiliary elements. Now, the basic functional elements are the integral part of an instrument system. When you take an instrument system, uh, these are the parts that the system cannot do without. In each and every instrument, these basic elements must be there. And they include one, the transducer. Uh, the second one is the signal conditioning which is also known as the intermediate modifying element or the data presentation element. Now these three basic, uh, these three elements must be integrated in that particular instrument you're trying to use. Then we have the second type, which is the auxiliary functional elements. And these are elements which may be I've used the term maybe because the system, the instrument can still work without these elements. So it may be incorporated in a system depending on the type and the nature of the measurement technique. You find some instruments are uh, complicated, so they'll also need uh, these auxiliary elements like calibration element, external power, uh, feedback elements and the microprocessor. So depending on whatever measurement you are trying to work on or the type of the instrument you are trying to work with, it might need the four auxiliary measurements on top of the three basic. Because remember I said the basic are the ones that are incorporated in the system. And these ones, they may or may not be incorporated. Uh, now let's see as the, the basic functional elements, let's see them in details, whatever they entail. When you take one of the basic elements as the transducer, the transducer is the first component of an, of an uh, instrument. It senses and converts the desired input to a more convenient and practicable form to be handled by the measurement system. Now, when you are trying to do your measurements, the first of all, you, the transducer is the one which is always in contact with the measurement, whatever you are trying to measure. So it senses the desired input in one physical form and converts it to an output in another physical form. So maybe before I reach that, I can just explain. Assuming this is your measurement, whatever you are trying to, to measure, it can be any physical form, maybe pressure, or volts, all that, or any physical thing you are trying to measure. Then it goes so the, the transducer is the one that is in direct contact with these measurements. So when you are trying to measure voltage, you have your, um, you have your multimeter, you have the leads. So the leads are uh, what you can term them as the transducer because when you are trying to measure the voltage, they are the ones that will be in direct contact with, with the voltage. So uh, we can say the input variable to the transducer could be pressure, acceleration, or temperature, voltage, or any other measurement, just as I have written here. There can be many, whatever variable you are trying to, to measure. So it is the transducer that is always in contact with the measurement. So, uh, for example, just as I said, the transducer changes this form and the output is in another different form, the output of the transducer. So uh, when you check here, for example, I'll just mention two, maybe two examples and the principle of operation and the type of the device. So let's say you are trying to measure uh, temperature. So the input to the transducer is the temperature. Then whatever the, uh, the transducer obtains is temperature, but now the output from the transducer becomes the voltage. 
So the principle of operation is that an EMF is generated across the junctions of two dissimilar metals. So in this case, you want a voltage. So you will get an EMF which will be generated. So it is the transducer which will give you an output. For example, when you are trying to measure, to use a device known as a thermocouple or thermopile. Uh, when you are using the pressure thermometers, you are measuring the temperature but now the output will be the pressure so it is the pressure of a gas of vapor varies with the change in the uh, in the temperature and uh, these ones were commonly used as the liquid uh, uh, also there's the liquid in glass thermometer whereby the uh, liquid is displaced it is dis uh, displaced from a particular level to another level and there's a thermal expansion which causes this displacement in the volume. So when, the, there's, when there's this expansion, you'll find the liquid moving from a lower state to an, another state until it settles. Then the person who is taking the measurement can definitely know where the, the temperature is. So those are just a few. There are several examples of those. Uh, Then uh, uh, when you uh, try to, buy, uh, to purchase a transducer, there are also some characteristics that you should check. You, ju you don't just buy a transducer just because it is there. So you also have to put in place that it should, one, it should recognize and sense the desired input signal and should be insensitive to other signals present simultaneously. Uh, by this, I mean when, when you are trying to do some measurements, there are also other parameters that might change. For example, you are trying to uh, measure temperature, then all of a sudden vibrations occur. So you'll find the vibrations interfering uh, with your measurement if the transducer will sense that uh, disturbance or the vibration that had occurred. So it should only recognize whatever it's supposed to measure. Then it should not alter the event to be measured. By this I mean if it is the temperature, it should measure that. It will, it should not alter the event or give a different output which is not uh, recognized or which is not expected. It should have a good accuracy. This is the first element. This is the first element that receives the signal. So if it has an error, if it has an error, then definitely this error will proceed up to where you will see your measurement. Or uh, as, the, as the blocks progresses, we will see these errors multiplying. So it should be accurate so that you minimize the error at the initial stage. It should have a good reproducibility. Reproducibility here means um, I take somebody takes the same uh, instrument or the same transducer or does the same instrument the same measurement you are able to reproduce the same same uh, measurements that was obtained maybe if you are one is doing measurement in Nairobi the other one is doing measurement in somewhere else it should be equal uh, the same then Maybe somebody does the measurement today, after some few days, uh, the measurement is done. Then there, there should be no variations on the, the, on the result that is obtained. It should have amplitude linearity. By that I mean the amplitude linearity, it must be linear. When you have, when you have your, when you expect your output, So your input must be linear with the output. It should not have some nonlinearity form. So that whichever signal that is input here is easily uh, realized by the transducer. It should not induce phase distortion. Uh, phase distortion means maybe when you are taking some measurements, uh, in this case, 
So maybe you can have an output maybe of this sort or you can have uh, a distorted output instead of having something of that uh, of, uh, of these oscillations, you have it like that. So these are the errors maybe we, which you expect from a transducer. So it should be very, very accurate. It should have adequate frequency response or good dynamic response. So in that, it's just the same as its response. When you, ha you give it a particular input, you expect uh, a certain output until it settles. So that is what I mean by the response. Uh, we still continue with the desirable characteristics. So all these characteristics you have to check uh, when you are uh, going to buy a transducer element so that you don't make mistake at the beginning. Uh, it should be able to withstand hostile environments with, without damage and should maintain the accuracy within the acceptable uh, limits. The accuracy I've talked about. Now the hostile environments, assuming you are working in a place which is very, very hot, uh, maybe on a boiler and you put an instrument there. So what it means that it should withstand that hostile environment. It should have high signal level and low impedance, easily available and ruggedness. Not that when you have a problem with your transducer, you have to wait for it to be shipped maybe from somewhere which takes like a month or so. So it should be readily available. It should have good reliability and ruggedness. In other words, if a transducer drops down by chance, it should still be operative. These are things that we meet in our daily life. You find that when an instrument falls down, even a phone, uh, that is the end of it. So it should be, it should be rugged. Uh, then the leads of a transducer should be sturdy and not be easily pulled off. This one is referring specifically to the uh, meters, uh, multimeters, whereby you use the leads as the transducers. So you find that these leads, when they easily keep off, they can uh, easily be misplaced. So it should be, they should be sturdy. The rating of the transducer should be sufficient and should not break down. So the rating refers to whatever uh, power you are expecting to, to power your transducer with. Uh, then we go to the second block, that is the signal conditioning. Another name for that is intermediate modifying elements. Now from the transducer we have our, we call it signal conditioner. Uh, some people also call it signal processor and this one basically is for manipulating or processing the output of the transducer in a suitable form now this this output from the transducer generally it is usually small because of the linearity there's no amplification here so whatever comes in so long as it is in the desirable form that is uh, that is used by the system, whatever comes out is just the same as this. And that is why you say it should not have phase distortion. Whatever comes in should come out the way it is. Now, this signal is very small and you find that it cannot be seen maybe at the display level. So we use the signal processor or signal conditioner to process or manipulate that output. Uh, and I've just said that the output of the transducer element is usually too small to operate, so we need that signal conditioner. So in signal conditioners, we can have, for example, mechanical linkages, which includes the levers, gears that do, uh, does that work, electrical cables. So depending on whatever measurement you're trying to do, maybe you can use... Uh, mechanical measurement, electrical cables, uh, transmission of fluid through liquids, pneumatics, uh, or uh, when we are doing the remote transmission, we use the radio links or um, telemetry. These are just uh, signal conditioners or processors that are applied depending on the type of measurement. 
you are performing. Now in signal conditioning, it has uh, uh, some functions. One is for the amplification, which I just said, since this signal is very, very small. So when it goes to the signal conditioner, you find it being amplified so that it can be seen on the display. So a suitable amplifying element is incorporated. Uh, so when you're trying to work maybe in the mechanical amplifying elements, you can have uh, hydraulic or pneumatic, depending on whatever measurement you're trying to do. Amplifying, uh, op uh, optical amplifying elements, we see those ones like the lenses. Electrical amplifying elements, we find the voltage. We can either magnify the voltage, current, and from the two uh, quantities, the voltage and the current, we get our gain. Now that is our amplification factor. Then uh, another work apart from the amplification, it also does the signal filtration. So signal filtration means the removal of unwanted noise signals. So this, this transducer, since of it, because of its uh, linearity, you'll find it carrying some signals that are not necessary. So it is also the work of the signal conditioner or the signal processor to remove the unwanted noise that tend to obscure the transducer signal. So depending on the type of situation or the nature of the signal, you can have mechanical filters, electrical filters, pneumatic filters, uh, and maybe electrical filters are many. Examples include the analog to digital conversion, differentiation, integration, and all that. So you also need to know whatever uh, conditioner is being used in your instrument, depending on the situation and the nature of the signal which is uh, required or which is necessary. Then um, we have the third element, which is the base, uh, one of the basic, which is the data presentation. Data presentation element. So basically data presentation, that is what we see by our naked eyes. So whatever happens, assuming you are measuring some uh, some current or voltage, whatever you will see displayed on the meter, like 3.24 volts, this is what we see with our eyes. And whatever action we do is maybe to take the, the, the leads and put inside the socket or whatever measurement you are trying to do. So whatever happens here at the signal conditioning so that we can see the reading is whatever I've, I've mentioned is whatever I've mentioned here, because here is where we have our transducer. So the transducer have your, the leads, you, you put them in a socket or whatever measurement you're trying to do, and then you see the measurement with your naked eyes. So that is what we call the data presentation element. So it gathers the output of the signal conditioning element and presents the same to be read or seen by the experimenter. And this element should also have as fast as response as possible. So that immediately, immediately the transducer gives a signal, it shows you the difference. Or whatever, uh, whatever signal is, is obtained from the transducer is definitely, it should not have some delays so that you have to wait for you to get the output. It should give you instantly. Then it should impose as, as little drag on the system as possible. That is what I've mentioned or I've explained. It should have a very small inertia, friction, uh, it is stiction, etc. So that one is uh, usually in the mechanical, in, in mechanical measurements. Or uh, you are doing some, you, you are working with the, with the signal conditioner, which is mechanically. So you'll find these gears, the gears that are supposed to come uh, in contact with one another, assuming this one is like this. So you find that when the gears move, there's some stiction or friction in them. So 
it should not have all that. Then the elements may be either of the visual display type, graphic, uh, recording type, or a magnetic tape. Uh, like whatever we see when you are measuring the current or, or uh, voltage, those are in visual, we only see them. However, there are also some instruments that ca they can also record for future references. And uh, you can also print and store. So uh, that's, that slide just explains these, whatever I've been trying to explain. Though in some books or in some uh, explanation, you find this one as one transducer. Then we have the signal processor, data presentation, and then we have our display. So this is whatever we see in, with our naked eyes. So you find when they have two, we'll see an example as we move, where we have some two transducers. So we call this one the primary transducer and the secondary transducer. However, mostly they are only one transducer. So we are through with the basic, uh, basic functional elements. So we are going to look at the auxiliary functional elements. In the auxiliary func uh, functional elements, remember I said these elements may be incorporated in the system depending on the type of instrument you are trying to use or the nature of the measurement. So the, uh, there are uh, uh, like three or four. So we'll have the external power element. The external power element is just to power or to assist, uh, in, uh, to assist with the power supply to any of these. So you might find that you're working with a signal conditioner which requires power. So you definitely have it, um, power. Or any, it can either be also be a transducer or this depending on the type of instrument or the nature of instrument. Then we also have a feedback element. This feedback element just gives the uh, variation. It gives the variation uh, so between the output and the input. So we have this input as the feedback. It is like a sensor which compares the output and the input. So if it compares and generally give a feedback that shows mm -mm, there's a problem here. So maybe do an action, what is necessary. Maybe you are trying to control something, then you come across, uh, this is called a closed loop. So you make use of this feedback element to inform you of whatever error is likely to occur so that you can correct your error before it escalates. Then we have uh, microprocessor elements. It's also facilitate the manipulation of data for the purpose of simplifying or accelerating the data processing. So we can also have a microprocessor somewhere there just to facilitate the processing of the data. So you find that an instrument can work with only the three, depending on how simple it is, or it can also have other elements. I'm not saying that all the elements must be there. It can have one or two. So that diagram is just whatever I've been trying to explain here. Uh, here we have our measurements, the physical quantities to be measured. We have the force, velocity, pressure, displacement, and all that. Then here we have our transducer element. So transducer elements can be primary sensing or secondary sensing. So we have the input from this block going to the transducer element. Then from the transducer element, we have, this is our signal conditioning element. So this output goes to the signal conditioning element, which uh, amplifies, filters, uh, integrates, or converts, just the way you have mentioned. Then the modified signal from the signal conditioning element goes to the display. This is the display. So the display can be analog indicator. It can be a digital display. It can be a data logger, graphical uh, display, the ones that we see in our CROs, 
of the cathode ray oscilloscope then we, we can also have a printed output now from here depending on your measurements or uh, whatever you expect you can get your output and see with your naked eye then we have our calibration elements some instruments are uh, they have inbuilt calibration elements to correct the uh, maybe after certain measurements it uh, calibrates itself automatically so we have these or maybe if it says that the the things are not working rightly then we have the calibration element doing its work then we have the external power the external power can be ac or dc depending on your measurement and uh, all that so basically those are just what i've explained here in block diagram uh, now let's see on how we can identify the functional elements in an instrument this is an instrument uh, known as a pressure gauge so we have a drawing this is a schematic drawing this is the inside of uh, a pressure gauge element and this is the block diagram now just uh, to identify we, we first of all have to know how it operates so that you can come up and see whether it has some uh, auxiliary components or it only has the basic components now when the pressure is input here you see the pressure coming in this is a hollow tube then when it reaches here there's a lever this is a mechanical amplifier there's a lever uh, which is connected to the tip of the hollow tube or the hollow bottom tube so as this one moves as this one comes in th there's a motion here because this one will try to expand depending on whatever pressure you are trying to input so there will be there will be a displacement at this point as this displace uh, this displacement will be reflected by the lever so the lever will will move you see it will move on a gear on a pinion gear and it is also connected to the scale the pointer is connected to the scale so as this one moves backward or forth or forth you'll find the scale also moving until it stops somewhere then you take your reading so that is uh, generally how a pressure gauge operates so now when we come to drawing the block diagram or obtaining the uh, functional elements uh, this one is very simple we just have the pressure here being input in the bottom tube so our bottom tube is the transducer because it is the first part of the element which is in contact with the measurement then the small displacement the small displacement here at x uh, remember i said as you input pressure uh, there will be a displacement here so the small displacement x is uh, taken up by the amplifiers which is at the lever lever and the gearing so that is where we have our signal conditioning so we'll have the amplified displacement remember here i said it is very very small the output from the transducer is very very small so it is amplified here then it taken up directly because it is connected to the pointer so it will deflect on the pointer and the pointer is connected to the scale so you can easily get your reading and that is what we have here as our output so our signal conditioning element is the i think yeah, there's a problem this is a display this is a display element so this is a display element and this is the signal conditioning which involves the uh, gearing the the lever and the gears then here we have our display and we see whatever we can see with our naked eye on the scale so basically that is how uh pressure gauge operates and these are the functional elements so you find this type of pressure gauge it doesn't require any uh additional auxiliary element it operates like this and it is okay however you can also modify it uh just as we'll see you can also modify it so that the same same pressure gauge can also incorporate some 
some auxiliary elements. For example, you have the same same transducer here, but now instead of of the displacement being connected to the gears as we saw on the lever or, and the gear and the levers on the other side, here it is connected to a soft iron core. This is uh, an electrical mechanism. So you find that there will still be displacement, but now as it moves up and down, up and down, depending on whatever you are trying to input here, you'll find there's an EMF which is generated here in this uh, soft iron core. Now this EMF, it is in terms of voltage, and this voltage goes, since it is just uh, the same as this uh, displacement, but now in a different form, it will now be amplified using a voltage amplifier. Then you will see uh, you are reading on a digital voltmeter. So this one is a bottom tube pressure gauge with electrical readout. So you find that we have here a, volt, a digital voltage which is connected to the external power. So we need this power to connect to uh, this uh, soft iron core to generate that EMF. Then we also need that power to supply the voltmeter uh, the, the, for the digital display. And at the same time, we need it for the voltage amplification. So you find uh, in this type of pressure gauge, it has an auxiliary element of an external power, which is, uh, which is included. So basically, the transducer element is still our bottom tube and UVDT. This is now where it is now converted to electrical because we want an electrical readout. Then from there, it goes to the signal conditioning element, which is our amplifier. And definitely the data presentation element is our digital uh, voltmeter. Then the, the third uh, example is an electrodynamic displacement measuring device. So in this case, we have our motion, which is moving in this direction. This one is a magnet, and this one is the coil, which is not, uh, it is not magneted. But since it is close to this, the movement, as it moves in and out, you'll find some magnetizing taking place, and an electrical signal will be generated. This electrical signal, the one which is passed to the amplifier, then we can see it. The output from the amplifier, which is V2, can see it in a cathode ray oscilloscope. So this, this is just a, an element or an instrument which is having the basic elements, the transducer element, signal conditioner, and the data processing. So uh, for short exercises, maybe you can, uh, one, identify or indicate the basic auxiliary function elements of these devices. This is a diaphragm type liquid level gauge. So first of all, you, you, you should know how the, the instrument is working so that you can identify uh, where the signal, the transducer is, signal conditioner and all that. Then a second exercise is also to identify the same same components in a spring balance with electrical readout. Spring balance alone, the one that is used in the Mamamboga's uh, uh, market, they don't have the electrical readout. So it is just a spring and they sh show you the weight on the scale and all that. So this one has an improvement with an electrical readout. So you have to identify what happens. Uh, then the last one, now I think this is the second last. We have the float operated fuel level gauge used in automobiles. So this one is an indicator of the fuel, fuel level. So you should also know how it operates and identify the elements that are involved. Then lastly, we have a mechanical type of displacement measuring dial gauge. So you also have to know how it operates, how it is used so that you can identify the elements that are involved and thank you so much that is the end of our lesson two televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our mku online platform
You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.